Okay, so we're going to begin a typical installation of Exchange 2007 Service Pack 1. Assuming you've met all of the prerequisites, that is you have the .NET framework installed and you have your PowerShell and everything else is all set up, you're going to begin on the installation screen with step number four. And so we'll select step number four and we'll work through the wizard so that we can begin the installation. The first screen we come to is the introduction, which actually has quite a bit to say considering this is Service Pack 1. So you might want to read this the first time you're doing an installation of Service Pack 1 if you've installed the RTM of Exchange 2007, because this points out some of the new features that are included with Service Pack 1. Next we come to the license agreement, which we want to accept. Then we have the error reporting screen where we can choose to work with Microsoft if there are any problems on the server by saying yes to error reporting when our system has a problem it will connect to Microsoft and let Microsoft know that there's a problem and so we can have a part when it comes to any fixes that are put in place for the future here we see the typical exchange server installation and the custom exchange server installation if we just select custom for a moment here you can see the server role selections. We can select various server roles to exist on a single server unless we're installing an edge transport server or one of the clustered mailbox roles. So let's go back and click typical installation. Being that this is the first server for this organization, it asks us to provide an exchange organization name. And here we're asked about client settings. If we have pre-Outlook 2007 clients, it wants to know because it will install the public folder database for us. If we don't, then it will just install a mailbox database and no public folder database. Here we see a readiness check is performed to ensure that our system is ready to install the roles that we've selected. In this case, the client access server, the hub transport server, and the mailbox server roles because that's what's part of a typical installation. and once the readiness check is complete it goes forward with the installation we're gonna speed things up a little bit it can certainly take a lot longer than a minute to move through the installation of all of these different roles and once the installation is complete it takes us right into the exchange management console from there we see we have instructions on completing or finalizing our deployment. So I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next lesson.